I'm going to show you how to change the subject of a formula. Now, it sounds a bit confusing, changing the subject, but all it means is we're going to be rearranging equations to get one of the letters by themselves. And in these ones, we're making x the subject, so it means we need to rearrange the equations to get x equals. So everything that's not x will be on the other side of the equal sign. So let's look at the first one. Here's our x value. Remember, this is what we need to get by itself. And it's very similar to solving equations. So if you know how to solve linear equations, these should be quite easy. It's exactly the same method, except you don't even need to calculate anything. You're just rearranging the equation. So when we're rearranging this to get x by itself, we leave whatever's closest to x together for the moment. So we get rid of this part first. And the opposite of minusing b is to plus. And remember, if you plus b on the left-hand side of equals, you have to do the same on the right-hand side to keep the equation balanced. So on the left-hand side, minus b plus b, well, that's just zero. So whenever you do the opposite, they just cancel each other out. And so we're left with 1xy. On the right-hand side, t plus b, well, we can't actually work that out because they're different letters. So we just leave it as that, t plus b. Now, the last step, at the moment, um, x is being multiplied by y, so the opposite of multiplying by y is to divide by y. And remember to do the same thing on both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side, where you do the opposite, they just cancel because y divided by y is just 1, so we're left with 1x. And on the right-hand side, just be careful because you need to divide all of this by y. So the best way to write this is to write it as a fraction. Because if we put t plus b on top and y underneath, that means we're dividing all of that numerator by y. So that's the first one. We've made x the subject of the formula because it says x equals. Okay, on to number two. So this time it's a bit different because we've got a fraction. Well, remember I said leave whatever's closest to x for the moment. So we're going to be get rid of, get, getting rid of this plus m. So we need to subtract m. And remember to do the same thing on both sides. On the left-hand side, remember, they just cancel because that goes to zero. So we're left with x over t. And on the right-hand side, well, b minus m is just b minus m. And the final step, x is being divided by t, so the reverse is to multiply by t. And remember, the same thing on both sides of the equation. The side where you do the opposite cancels, so we're just left with 1x. And on the right-hand side, be careful again, because remember, you're multiplying everything here by t. So you could write it like this, okay, and put this in brackets first. Or if you expand those brackets, that's fine as well. So either way is fine, as long as you're multiplying everything by t. Now, on to number three. So again, we've got a fraction, except this time it's one big fraction. So my first step is just to get rid of that fraction. And to get rid of the fraction, we multiply by the denominator, which is this one here. So we're going to multiply by y on both sides of the equation. The left-hand side just cancels, and we're left with 4x minus t. And on the right-hand side, well, y minus y is y squared. So this time we can just simplify that a little bit, instead of just leaving it as y times y. And now it's very similar to question number one. Okay, we're just undoing everything around x. So the opposite of minusing t is 2 plus. On the left-hand side, it just cancels, and I'm left with 4x. On the right-hand side, I've now got y squared plus t. And then the opposite of multiplying by 4 is to divide by 4. So on the left-hand side, again, where we do the opposite, it just cancels because 4 divided by 4 is just 1, so we're left with 1x. And on the right-hand side, just be careful again because we're dividing everything by 4. So remember, if we're dividing all of it by 4, just like in question 1, the nicest way is to write it as a fraction. So write y squared plus t all divided by 4. Okay, so there's number 3. Now, on to number 4. So it doesn't matter that x is in the denominator, we need to get rid of the fraction and just like before, to get rid of the fraction, you multiply by the denominator, which happens to be x. So we're going to multiply by x on both sides. So the left hand side just cancels and we're left with y plus t. 
And on the right hand side, m times x is just mx. But remember, we need to get x by itself. So x is being multiplied by m. The opposite of multiplying is to divide. So we divide by m on both sides. It doesn't matter that x is on the right hand side, that's fine. So when we do the opposite, the m divided by m is just 1, so we're left with 1x over here. And we need to divide all of that by m, so I'm going to write it as a fraction again. So y plus t all divided by m looks like that. Okay, let's make them a bit harder. Okay, so in these last two examples, I'm still making x the subject of the formula. However, there's a slight problem because there is more than one x term in these questions. In number five, we've got this, that's an x term, and also this one. So we're going to struggle by getting x by itself because if I divide this part by t, it gets rid of the t on here, but then I'll end up having a divide by t for this x, which doesn't get me anywhere, okay? So the only thing that you can do when you've got more than one x term is factorise. That's the only way of isolating that x term. So I'm going to take out my common factor, which is x, and then I'm going to open the brackets. Remember, factorise means putting into brackets. So you have to just take out that value of x. Now, inside the brackets, I should have t plus 1, because x times t is xt, and x times 1 is just x. So I've done the factorising, okay? Now I can separate x from everything else. Remember, brackets mean multiply. So x is being multiplied by everything inside the brackets. So the opposite, the reverse, is to divide. So we're going to divide both sides of the equation by t plus 1. Remember to use the brackets because we're dividing by all of this. Now, on the left-hand side, when we divide something by itself, we just get 1. So we're left with 1x on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to write this as a fraction because I'm dividing m by all of this, so t plus 1. So I don't need to put the brackets here if I'm now writing it as a fraction. So there's the answer. So remember, if you've got more than one x term and you've got to make x the subject, you need to factorise and factor out that x value in order to separate it from everything else. Okay, let's look at number six. So we've got a similar problem because I can see x here and I can see an x here and there's a fraction as well. I'm going to start by get ri getting rid of that fraction. So remember to get rid of a fraction, you need to multiply by the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by 3 on both sides. On the left hand side, remember, you just cancel because you're left with 1 and then I've got x m plus b left over. On the right hand side, if I multiply xt by 3, I just get 3xt. You don't need to write the multiply sign, you can just group them like that. And now we need to get x terms together and everything that's not x away from the x's. So it doesn't matter if you put x's on the left or x's on the right, either way is fine. I'm going to put the x terms on the right hand side of the equals, so anything that's not x, for example the b, is left over on the left hand side. So when I move that across the equal sign, remember it changes sign. At the moment it's positive xm, so when it moves across the equal sign it will change to a minus. So the b is left over, then I've got the equal sign, this hasn't moved, then I've got my minus xm. And now it's like before. Remember, to isolate that x, to get the x by itself, you need to factorise. So we're going to factor out that x on the right-hand side and put everything else into brackets. So x multiplied by something gives me the 3xt, well, just 3t. Then I've got my minus. x multiplied by something gives me xm, which must be m. So the final step, the opposite of multiplying x with inside that bracket is to divide. So you're just going to divide by that bracket 3t minus m on both sides of the equation. On the right hand side where you divide by itself you just get 1, so we're left with 1x on the right hand side. And on the left hand side remember to write that as a fraction because you're dividing b by all of this, so 3t minus m. And there we go, there's the last one. So if you're a bit rusty on factorising, it might be a good idea to brush up on that. Just remember, with these 
tricky challenge questions. If you've got more than one X term, if you're making X a subject, you need to factor out that X in order to separate it from everything else. Okay, so if the X terms aren't already on the same side, like in this one, that's the first job. You put X terms on one side, non-X terms on the other, before you can do that factorising part. Anyway, I hope you understand now, making X the subject. It's the same idea if you're making Y the subject, it just means rearranging to get Y equals. And so that's it. So goodbye for me.